All right, guys, as mentioned, I'm going to go and give you guys the details on how my forward facing sonar with Lowrance Active Target is set up. I'm gonna give you guys all the settings. We're gonna go through all the details to make sure that your units are running as clear and as best as possible. I'm gonna go into, like I said, exactly what works for me. And this could change, just keep in mind, this could change based on you know the time of year, water clarity, water depth. All of these things are gonna be stuff that you're going to have to tweak and modify based on the type of water that you're in. However, this is what works for me, and I'm gonna share all the secrets. I'm gonna give you guys all the juice on my specific settings, again, for active target for Lowrance. So let's go. So we're at the Lowrance unit up front. This is what I use. It's a 12 inch HDS Lowrance Live. I'm just gonna walk you guys through. My whole point of this is, as you guys can see, I am on my active target screen, and I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys all of the specific settings that I'm running right now today. This will hopefully give you guys a great start to go ahead and get your unit singing to make sure that you guys have the best picture as possible on your forward facing sonar. So as you guys can see here, we're in the settings now. Obviously the mode is in forward. Uh, that's what I always keep it in. Again, I fish deeper water. That's what works for me. My forward range. 95% of the time, guys, is going to stay on 100 feet. For me, that's about my maximum cast range, and that's about my maximum distance or range that I can really see clarity well. So I can see bait, I can see fish at that range. When I go out to 120, it starts getting a little squirrely, and because that cone angle is a little bit wider at that range, it makes it very tough for you to put it on a fish at that range. Again, especially casting super far, and then also hitting your target and understanding what your target is, specifically when it's a fish, a small little fish at 120 feet. Uh, it's just, it's a little much. So most of the time, that's what it stays on for me is 100 feet. The downrange, I normally keep on auto. This could be kind of controversial. Uh, a lot of guys normally will pick a range and then keep it there because what that will actually do, and I'm gonna give you guys some, some info here, but what that will actually do is when you keep it on the same range, you start to be able to distinguish the size of the marks or the returns of the fish. And you will be able to visually understand, you know, oh, that's a two pounder. Oh, that's a four pounder. Oh, that looks like a five plus, you know, something like that. So when you keep it on that same depth range, it doesn't distort the image uh, regardless of what depth you're in. Again, so when you're in auto range, when you go up shallower, the fish are going to look bigger because of, again, how the screen adjusts to putting the bottom on the bottom of the sonar. So the fish are going to look bigger when the water is shallower, and the fish are going to look smaller when the water is deeper, if you have it on auto depth range. So just keep that in mind, and that's a, a point or perk of why you would keep that depth range on a specific depth. However, for me, I've been doing this a long time. I'm not saying it's better or worse. Again, this is just for me. I keep it on auto. I have a pretty keen eye already in understanding the adjustment of the actual image itself based on depth. So I have a pretty good uh, understanding of what size fish it is, regardless of how much it changes. So again, my brain and just for the amount of time I've been doing this, I can, you know, as soon as it adjusts the depth range on auto, I still, I still pick up on the, you know, it's a very approximate. It's not like, oh, I'm, there's a three pound, three ounce fish, or, oh, there's a six pounder. It's not like that. It's more, you know, it's ranges. It's, oh, that one's a, a dink. That one's a one to two pounder. Oh, that one's a good return. That's probably, you know, a three, three plus. And then you get some out here that it's like, oh, that's a big fish. You know, that's a very big fish, probably a striper, uh, but could be bass too. I mean, there's some monster bass out here, but that's something to play with for, uh, for you guys. And just to go ahead and find what works best for you on that downrange. Again, I use auto, but again, you could set this at any range you want and start to dial in what the fish look like at, on your unit. My contrast, I normally like this thing singing. So I normally keep it on auto just so it changes based on the water clarity and depth that I'm in. But I normally keep this thing way up. I mean, as you guys can see, I mean, I have it on, the higher you go, you're gonna blow out your screen and get all this, you know, junk. I think I had it on A plus five, uh, which is auto plus five in terms of sensitivity. 
And the lower we go, again, we're just gonna get less of a picture. You guys can see there it blows out. And I'm sorry, not blows out, it disappears. So I like for me, A plus five. Auto plus five, again, that's greater contrast than the auto settings. And again, like I said, I, I want a hard return. I'm not so much worried about the clutter and you guys can see some little pings going on across the screen. I'm not so worried about that. I wanna see everything, that's my opinion. Noise rejection, again, that's going to be, you know, if there's noises under the water, maybe other transducers that you have on your boat are causing interference. They shouldn't if they're set up properly, but everyone's boat, you know, is not. So that's a part of it. I normally keep this on low, just, you know, there's boat propeller, uh, I'm sorry, motors running and, and underwater, it just creates a little bit of disturbance. Keep that on low uh, for me. Again, that's what works for me, it keeps my screen pretty clear and allows me to see everything that I need to. Uh, default mode, don't do that. I guess that restores everything, never used it. If we go to more options, we come into our, de our color palette. And for me, I use palette number one. I like that hard blue. It's really easy for me to see. I mean, it's a black screen and then every fish or bait fish is just a hard blue on, uh, on the screen. So it allows me to see it very easily, but you can play around with what color works best for you. Range lines, do not do that. It's just more clutter. And honestly, I mentioned in my other sonar settings video, but if you turn on the grid lines, guys, like it's not like I need to look out and be like, oh, that fish is at, you know, 23.6 feet. Like it's, it doesn't matter. Like I just look down and you know, you might say, oh, that fish is 80 feet out and uh, you know, 20 feet down, it's kind of like battleship. You just need to, it's not, you need to be uh, approximate. You just need to see where that fish at, what depth of the water it's in. You know, break it down into thirds. Maybe he's in the upper column, mid column, or bottom. I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. It's not that difficult. You don't need to dial it in that much. Stable view, you really want stable view on, guys. I mean, you're gonna be rocking and rolling in waves, and most of the time it's not gonna be flat calm. If you turn this off, you know, it's, it's just, the, the bottom is not going to rest, again, along this bottom of the screen and give you that clearer picture. So I always keep stable view on. It just allows the bottom of the lake to stay towards the bottom of the screen and allows you to, again, not move around and be rocking and rolling and try to figure out, you know, is, it, is, the, is there a point there? Is there a ditch? Is there a hump? Whatever. So it just allows you to distinguish what the bottom of the lake is doing. Again, same as other sonars, if you guys have watched that other video for my 2D down scan and side scan. Surface clarity low, I'm really not worried about, you know, really not worried about that on forward facing so much, but I normally keep that off. And then finally, down here, which is a cool feature most people don't know about it, is there's actually a record video button. If you guys put an SD card in your HDS Live, you guys have wondered how I've gotten some of those uh, cool shots. That's exactly how. I go ahead and hit record video, and just like that, we have all of my sonar that I've recorded so that I can show you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you guys learned something about your settings, go ahead and drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what your favorite fo uh, forward-facing sonar setup is, and, or what brand, I should say. I have mine, and to be honest with you guys, I think I've been pretty clear about it before. It may not be the brand that I have on my boat. So completely personal preference. It's just fishing. Like I said, this works for me. These settings work for me and they allow me to catch a ton of fish as you guys have seen. So again, thank you guys as always. Thank you guys so much for the support. Hopefully this helps someone out there to dial in their forward facing sonar settings and I will talk to y'all soon.